We're going to continue today in our journey through Ashrei. So last week we focused on the opening phrase of the first Pasuk, Ashrei Yoshive Beisecha. Praiseworthy are those who dwell in your home, Hashem. And of course, we highlighted the idea that the Ashre Yoshe, praiseworthy are the ones who dwell in your home, meaning that in my relationship with Hashem, the goal is yeshiva. The goal is to be seated. Being seated represents a certain level of permanence. Being seated represents a certain level of consistency. That whereas often the great challenge in spirituality is what we call episodic spirituality. Sometimes I'm embedded with God, sometimes I'm inspired, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm following what I'm supposed to be doing, sometimes I'm not. Now, of course, this is the nature of the human condition. The human condition is filled with peaks and valleys. There are always ups and downs. There are times when I'm in it, and there are times where I just feel like I'm on the spiritual periphery. But the goal, the goal, the stated goal of the Jew is Ashrei Yosh Secha. My goal is to create a certain level of consistency in my relationship with Hashem, Yeshiva, to be seated. God, I want to be embedded with you as much as possible. What about the second part of the phrase? Od Yahalalucha Salah, which literally translated means, they will, praiseworthy is the one who dwells in your house. Od Yahalalucha Salah, you will continue to praise you, Salah, forever. And the great Tzadik Rav Yecheskel of Kazmir explains that this phrase is absolutely something incredible. And the Rebbe says like this, the Rebbe explains, as we just mentioned before, there are moments of yeshiva, there are moments of inspiration, there are moments of ashrei yoshve veisecha, but you know what? No one always lives in ashrei yoshve veisecha moments of life. No one has constant inspiration. No one always feels embedded or connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There are peaks and valleys, there are ups and downs. So what's the goal in life? The goal in life is that when you have an Ashrei Yoshve Vesecha moment, when you have that moment of inspiration, when you have that moment of connectedness, you have to find a way almost to bottle it up and take it with you. That's the old Yahalalucha Sela. HaKadosh Baruch what I pledge to you is Ashrei Yoshve Vesecha. I'm going to try my best to be consistent. I'm going to try my best to be seated in your presence. I'm going to try my best to lead a yeshiva life where I'm not an episodic Jew. I don't just engage in episodic holiness, but I try to create a consistency. I try to always be with you. I try to be reliable in my service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but recognizing that's not always going to happen. But what I will do is, in those moments of inspiration, I'm going to try to take some of that with me that's the old Yahalalucha Sela. I will continue to praise you forever. I will continue to take some of that bottled up Ashrei moments and take that with me into the not so inspired moments of life. You know, every day at the end of Psukidism, at the end of the Bracha Vishtabach, we say, Habocher Bishire Zimra. We say that Hashem, that God is the one, Habocher, who chooses the beautiful songs of his beloved nation. And the Bashan Tavak Kodesh says you have to vocalize that a little bit differently. It's Habocher Bishiyare Zimra. So what is Shirayim? Shirayim, leftovers. What does HaKadosh Baruch Hu love more than anything? He loves leftovers. You know, it's interesting. Most people could tolerate leftovers for a little bit, right? So maybe you'll eat your Shabbos leftovers Sunday night. Maybe Mamish, if you're good, Monday night. Once you get to Tuesday night, people are generally tired of leftovers. But yet, amazingly enough, the Ribbono Shal Olam never tires of leftovers. He loves leftovers. But what kind of leftovers does he love? He loves spiritual leftovers. He loves it. When I have a spiritual moment, and I try to take some of that moment with me as I go through the rest of life. You see, the Ribbono Shal Olam realizes we're not always going to be inspired. I'm not always on. I'm just not always on. I'm not always feeling it. But in those moments when I do feel it, in those moments when I am inspired, the goal is I have to figure out how do I take it with me? How do I bottle up a little bit of it? How do I take the shirayim? How do I take the leftovers of any spiritual moment with me into the next chapter, which maybe is not as inspired? That is the secret to successful Jewish living. You see, people often think that the goal is constant inspiration. No one has constant inspiration. Life for everyone is a series of peaks and valleys. The difference is how tall your peaks are or how deep your valleys are. 
but no one maintains a constant state of inspiration. So therefore my goal is that when I have those moments of inspiration, bottle up a little bit of it, save a little bit of it, take your leftovers with you so that the next day when you're feeling not as inspired, the next day when I'm in a valley, I have the ability to consume the leftovers. I have the ability to look at the shirayim. I have the ability for odia halalucha sela. And sometimes the leftovers of a spiritual experience are just as simple as remembering, you know, yesterday that shachris was really incredible. That shachris was really incredible. Yesterday my davening was great. Today, not so much. Not so much. Or yesterday, oh, when I learned that blat gimara, it was incredible. When I did that act of chesed, I felt so elated. Today, I'm just not feeling it. But I remember how I felt yesterday. And if I could take the Shem, if I could take the how I remember, how I felt yesterday, if I could take the leftovers of that last spiritual experience, you'd be surprised what leftovers could do. Leftovers could satiate. Leftovers could not only just fill the stomach, but they could also fill the soul. Leftovers re- could remind me. It's almost as if the Neshama is a fire. So it's right, it's, it's a fire. So sometimes the fire is raging. Sometimes the fire is uncontainable. Sometimes the fire is amazingly luminescent. And sometimes it's just a couple of embers. Sometimes it's just a couple of sparks. But even if you just have a couple of sparks, if you pour a little gasoline, you pour a little fuel on it, a little lighter fluid, that lighter fluid are the leftovers. That lighter fluid is there is the memories. Oh, yesterday, two days ago, five years ago, if I remember the last time I had that meaningful spiritual experience, that's the lighter fluid for the soul. That's the leftovers for the soul that could ignite even a dormant fire. Ashra Yoshve Vesecha. The goal in life is yeshiva. The goal in life is consistency. The goal in life is to embed myself with God, but recognizing that's not always possible. Therefore, old Yahalalucha Salah. I will continue to praise Yaakadish Baruch Hu, even when I'm not in an ashray state of life. I will take from those ashray moments. I'll take the shrine, I'll take the leftovers into the valleys of life. Those leftovers will remind me where I once was. Those leftovers will be the fuel for my fire that's burning a little bit low. Those leftovers will remember, will remind me where I can ultimately be, what I can ultimately aspire to become, and where I believe my life can truly go. Wishing everyone a wonderful day.